we're going to continue a look at the, the Sermon on the Mount that Jesus gave. And uh, we've reached Matthew 5, verses 43 to 48 this morning. So here's our reading on the screens for this morning. You have heard that it was said, Love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your Father in heaven. He causes his Son to rise on the evil and the good, and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Are not even the tax collectors doing that? And if you greet only your own people, what are you doing more than others? Do not even pagans do that? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Words which Jesus says at the end of that reading there for today. Be perfect like God. Which is a pretty tall order isn't it really especially perhaps on a Monday morning I mean it's something we might even cause us to despair because try as we might pray as we might improve as we might perfection is beyond us it seems indeed various wise folks over the years have accepted that perfection would seem to be out of our reach so George Orwell for example the author of books like 1984 and Animal Farm he said this he said the essence of being human is that one does not seek perfection well then there's this guy Michael J Fox Marty McFly in the Back to the Future films and uh, more recently if you saw him at the, at the BAFTAs last week he's a great example of how to live well with Parkinson's disease that he's had for a good 20-30 years now he said, I'm careful not to confuse excellence with perfection. Excellence I can reach for. Perfection is God's business. Which is wise, I think. But if perfection really is out of reach, I guess what does that mean when Jesus here tells us to be perfect? Well, as most things that might confuse us in the Bible, it often pays to understand what the original language the Bible was written in says. And this word that we translate as perfect is no different because it's a translation of the Greek word telios, telios. You wanna say some Greek this morning, say after me, one, two, three, telios, excellent. Now, telios can mean something's perfect as in without flaws. Look at the person next to you, for example. There you go, there you go. <laughs> but it could also mean something being perfect as in fully grown. We might say fully mature. So, for example, for an acorn to be telios means it's become an oak tree. It's become what was intended for it. It's fully matured from its potential. Now that, I'd say is something perhaps that we can understand, even with God's help, aim for, to become mature in our character, our faith, to grow into the people God has always longed for us to be. In other words, to reflect the God in whose image we're created. And so what might this kind of image-bearing maturity, this kind of reflection of God, look like in our lives? Well, for Jesus seems the essence of God that we're called to grow into, to reflect and to become, is love. But, and this is where I think maturity comes in, because the kind of love Jesus had in mind here is not simply loving those who love us or loving those who are easy to love. Now here Jesus says true love is not just about loving our neighbor or those we have stuff in common with, but rather this kind of Telios, mature love, a God kind of love, is, according to Jesus, about loving our enemies as well. So what does that look like? Well, again, as with most things, Jesus models it for us. So we see Jesus meeting or eating with those who didn't like him, 
those who would wish him harm, those who were slagging him off behind his back. Indeed, he'd make a point of breaking bread with those kind of people, not because he agreed with them, but because he loved them. He wanted them to become the people God had always intended them to be. And the best chance of that happening was not to reject them, but to share with them, to get to know them, to love them. Equally, though, Jesus welcomed those who others turned against, those condemned by others as sinners, tax collectors, prostitutes, and so on. But rather than condemning them, he treated them with grace and understanding. He treated them as people worthy of love. And in the gospel stories, when Jesus does that with people, more often than not, that leads to change in their lives. We might say a maturing in character on their part, away from what was wrong and a moving towards what was right, you know, what was wholesome, what we might say was this teleos idea of maturing. So what might that mean for us today? Well, you have your, your own ideas. And sometimes it's hard for us, I think, to think of ourselves as having enemies, since that's a pretty strong, even self-defeating prospect. But at the very least, I guess we'll all have people who we find difficult, people we struggle with, people who haven't always treated us the way that we would like to have been treated. What does it mean to love them in ways that God loves them? Well, I guess at the very least, and this may be as much as it's possible to do sometimes, it means not wishing them harm, not seeking revenge on them or wanting to get our own back. Or as Jesus says in that reading, not begrudging them the sun and the rain that shines and falls on each of us regardless of our conduct or character. But perhaps more than that, if possible, loving those we find difficult means asking God to help us see them as God does, as flawed people, yeah, but also as people of potential and of worth. And he perhaps loving those we find hard means seeing them as people for whom an act of kindness, an act of grace, an act of forgiveness that comes their way may just be the catalyst that's needed for them to grow into maturity themselves. You know, that's, that's my experience of God's love for me, that over the years, he's never written me off, but has persevered with me through his grace to enable me to, to grow as a person and with him. Now, I'm sure I still do God's head in every day, no doubt. But his gracious love for me is hopefully, slowly, but surely enabling me to mature and to become more teleos. And if that's how God has treated me, then the call on my life, and I'd say the call on each of our lives, is to love one another in the same way that we have first been loved.